Crusader genre in general is amongst my favorite to work on, mostly because it allows me to explore a lot of exotic instruments and mysterious sounds that uh, I don't often get the opportunity to play with. As far as the music goes, I'll pretty much be sticking with the same formula as I did for Crusader 1, which was a combination of sampled instruments alongside live players. While the latest technology is getting better and better and, and sounds fantastic, I can tell you that uh, nothing compares, and probably will ever compare, with the real thing. It's also a great excuse to get together with some super talented musicians who play all these various uh, eccentric instruments. And while I am the composer and arranger, uh, these other players really deserve a lot of the credit for helping create the atmospheres you'll be hearing. Anyhow, I figured I'd give everyone a small glimpse into what goes behind creating the sound for Firefly. I believe every studio should have a giant wall of beer cans in it. And over here is arguably the greatest sound effects prop ever invented. I'll bet that guy's pretty rich. This is my favorite tax write-off. This big area is what is referred to as a live room, and basically I use this space to record ensembles, large groups of people, uh, certain instruments sound better recorded in a larger space, and I also do a lot of sound effects recording here. And then we have... The door. Okay, we're in the control room now. This is the isolation booth, and all kinds of fun stuff happens behind that glass. Meet the coolest action figure of all time. Lots of buttons and knobs and lights. Not sure what most do, but they look cool. Oh, relax, little buddy. And that's about it. Oh, and here's the original mandolin used on the very first stronghold. A lot of people die in various ways in the Stronghold games, and while I'm a non-violent guy, I confess to finding myself darkly entertained working on this component of the audio. Let's just say I'm responsible for a lot of sore throats. Sometimes the way to get the best sounds is to throw a couple of people into the booth at the same time, so the one delivering the sounds has someone else to react to. Okay, here we are. Here's one of my favorite recipes for making the bloody squelchy sounds. A wet towel. Oop. Nice. Oh, that sounds like a spleen.
<laughs> yep, that's a good one. And finally, it all gets layered together for some good old-fashioned medieval sweetness. seem innocent enough. It's a double reed instrument. Um, in the orchestra you have uh, descendants of this and some other things. Double reeds in the orchestra are uh, the oboe or the English horn and the bassoon. And I think it's one of the loveliest, sweetest sounds in the world. But it's got holes instead of keys, so you can do all kinds of shading. <laughs> just like you might in the blues. Oh, God. Here's a quick demo of a technique known as key switching. Key switching allows a composer to squeeze a lot more expression out of his sampled instruments, and it works like this. Each of the blue keys on the left side of the keyboard represents different articulations or playing styles of a particular instrument. If I press one of these keys, it makes no sound but it instantly remaps the entire keyboard with a new set of samples. So, for example, on this flute sound, hitting the low D sharp will map the keys to play samples that have no vibrato. Hitting the low C will bring in an entirely different set of samples that do have vibrato. And other switches offer additional nuances that this instrument might make in the hands of a real player. So as I play different key switches with my left hand, while the right hand plays my melody, I can create much more interesting and believable lines. <laughs> 